You too. Um, first question, just kind of, there's a lot of continuity on this the staff. It looks like a lot of organizational continuity too. Some of the, some guys brought up what, what kind of went into the decisions on the whole kind of how you pieced it all together. Yeah, AJ, I'm glad you started there. There's a lot of uh, internal continuity. You know, we've talked a fair amount this off season appropriately about alignment, organizational alignment. And, you know, we want to make sure we're putting our proverbial money where our mouth is, so to speak. And we've got some, you know, three exceptional guys that, have done a tremendous job internally in organization. Mike McCoy will be in the hitting department with uh, Patrick O'Sullivan. And then uh, Ryan Barba will be our major league field coordinator. All three of these guys, you know, pretty much homegrown guys. Barb's comes from the Angels, but, you know, McCoy and Sully have been here, uh, started their coaching careers as homegrown Padres. And just know that it's very important to promote from within, create that continuity that we're going to continue to develop and make extremely strong in a, in a big part of our Padre way of, of, uh, of operating with our player development and graduating homegrown talent. So um, it's a good starting point to talk about our staff with, with these guys and, you know, congratulations to them on their, on their promotion to big leagues. Notably, no, no bench coach listed on your staff. Can you kind of go into explaining how those traditional duties will be divvied out and kind of maybe who would take the, the reins in the event that in the unlikely event that you ever get tossed from a game? No, that'll never happen. Um, you know, they're to manage 162 plus. Um, but yeah, so it's an untraditional way of looking at it. Once, you know, me and AJ put our heads together and, you know, one of the things we did um, is want to make sure we did take advantage of our homegrown talent, which we clearly have in looking at that and looking at a more a holistic approach to how we want to put a staff together. Um and you realize that you have Ryan Barba, who, again, will be the major league field coordinator, who has a ton of experience in the game, uh, is managing the game. By the way, we have six former managers on our staff, which I love. It's a very deep staff that's very high baseball IQ. But back to the bench coach uh, question, you know, you got Barbs who will fill what is more of a traditional bench coach's role, and that being – spring training organization, the hub, kind of the chief of staff of right, not only in spring training, but moving into the season with scheduling, um, communication with the other teams and lineups and getting those exchanged, um, grounds crew as far as times for batting practice infield, um, all the different kind of nuanced responsibilities that, that fall under the bench coach's umbrella. And then you lead into – and he'll be excellent at this. He's done it for years and, and uh, in a sense of being organized. And, and he's just going to be a tremendous asset to our staff. And then you look at it when the game starts. All right. So the bench coach now has a traditional role of multiple things, getting a pinch hitter ready, getting a pinch runner ready. Um, also, clearly being that person that is beside me that helps with the in game strategy. So when you look at it, um, and I had a, you know, Excellent bench coach, now the manager over in St. Louis, Ali Marmel. You know, it was a good relationship, and it was fantastic and how it worked. But then you look at it holistically and you go, okay, if we're going to have Mike McCoy on the bench as a hitting coach, we're going to have, you know, three hitting coaches in the department. And I can look at Mac who and say, hey, get so-and-so ready to pinch hit. Well, he is the hitting coach, one of them, and he can help prep that hitter. And he physically now can go be responsible for that. I can look at Barb's and say, hey, go get so-and-so, AJ, ready to pinch run. All right. He is now part of the pregame preparation of what that looks like. He can prep you for that. Now I've got, instead of one staff member trying to do three things, pinch hitter, pinch runner, um, game strategy, now I've got a person for each responsibility. And now it leads me into ESPO, which is by title now an assistant game strategist. So this, this marries really well with another facet of the bench coach's responsibility for the manager. And that is, first of all, he works with our catchers. He works with Ruben and the group on um, game preparation as far as, you know, how we're pitching people. So he's got a feel for that. ESPO's managed – for a number of years, he sees the game exceptionally well. So now I can have a dedicated guy that already has some preparation taking place prior to the that I can lean on that has managing experience 
that I can talk to about game strategy that's not going to be interrupted to go find a pinch hitter or a pinch runner or distracted in other areas that is also very qualified at um, being able to, to provide me some guidance. And, of course, Ruben will, will be the guy that I lean on on the pitching side. So when you looked at it holistically, it just you know made a lot of sense for all the reasons I've, I've shared with you. Mike, I joined in a few minutes late. Um, I was curious about the timing of your hire and maybe how that impacted putting a staff together. Uh, did you at all feel behind the eight ball playing catch up? Not at all. Uh, not at all. I mean, listen, we've, uh, I love our staff. I'll talk more specifically about some of the new guys here in a moment, but um, yeah, we got started, you know, got hired later in the, in the season, all season. Um, and then we took some time with the winter meetings and, and uh, but no, we, we had plenty of ample time to to do it right, Jeff. That was the biggest thing. Is you know we it's about six weeks plus going into putting this staff to um, looked at it from a lot of different angles, had a lot of different conversations, thought through it clearly as part of the explanation earlier to the bench coach question. Um, but ultimately, to sum up the question, answered your question is, you know, I felt really good about the internal candidates. Made sure we got that right. And then externally, um, getting the right people in the right spots for uh, what I think is is and know is going to be an excellent staff for our 2024 club. Was there a driving force behind the decision to kind of mesh the bench coach duties among the various coaches, like whether it was yourself or AJ Preller? Uh, it was a combination of things. Again, you know, this is probably something that people will um, dissect and make it maybe bigger than it actually is. But when we looked at it in a holistic fashion and looked at what the jobs descriptions are across the board and then looked across the strengths and skill sets. It's no different putting a staff together really than putting a lineup together, putting a team together. You know, your jobs are to take the resources you have and put people in the best they have experiences and chance to succeed. And when we had that mentality and looked at it from that lens, it, it got actually pretty crystal clear about how this would unfold. And like I said, I'm really excited about it. Last one for me for now. Um, hitting coach is a difficult job in San Diego. What? How did you, <laughs> how did Come you, on, Jeff. <laughs> how did you arrive at the configuration of the staff as it is now? Um, you know, you look at the staff in different sections. You know, you're pitching, hitting, and then you're more position player, base running defense. Um, there's a lot of layers to the staff. But specific to hitting, man, I am super pumped about this group. You know, we'll start with Victor Rodriguez. Um the word had gotten out earlier that Victor was going to be our guy. We didn't make it official clearly until today. Um, you know, you talk about just a wealth of information, a wealth of experience, a tremendously high level of respect in the industry. Um, and what says volumes to me about Victor of many things. Yeah. Well, there's advocacy from, from Terry Francona, who was with him in Boston and took him with him over to Cleveland, talked to Tito. Of course, he raved about him. Um, you know, it's great that that his peers speak very highly of him, which they do. Ruben Diablo was with him in Cleveland and, you know, unsolicitedly advocated for, for Ruben, but I, or for uh, Victor, rather. But I got to tell you, the most impressive thing for me about Victor is the number of players that I've known over the years um, including Alan Craig, who's senior advisor with our with our group, Morgan Burkhart, um, and he's got a relationship that doesn't hurt with our our you know Xander Xander Bogarts. Um, everybody speaks so highly of Victor and how much they've helped him in their career. His ability to to take something that's very extremely challenging in hitting, um, and make it simple, be positive, create you know. Uh, action items that are that are clear and concise and and again simple and actionable and you know personally I've known Victor since I was I was 12 years old when he was in double a with in Charlotte with coming up to, in his own career to to get to the big leagues with Baltimore but um he's going to be a fantastic addition he's already fitting in seamlessly he's already established relationships with our players and again he's got a lot of a lot of rightful credibility and He's just a high quality human as well. So excited about Victor. And, you know, then we're going to couple him with, I've alluded to Mike McCoy, who's done a, just a tremendous job, um, tr you know, in our, in our hitting uh, culture and establishing that as a hitting coordinator on the minor league side, 
really move the needles. And what I like about all of them, Victor included, Mac, Sully, is the um, the approach to how to actually win baseball games. How situational hitting is important, grinding out tough at bats, being prepared, um, having a having an understanding of what they're going to see, how to execute it. But really, a lot about competition. And Mac's done a great job with our system of getting guys to compete. Um, you know, in the batter's box and be ready to go in regardless of situation, which leads me into uh, Patrick O'Sullivan was in our d- double leg with us last year, has been in the organization for a while as a hitting coach, just recently got done um, hitting coach in the Arizona Fall League. And again, you know, it's, it's, it's great that our peers respect these guys, which they do internally and externally. But I got to tell you, you know, like with, with Mac and Sully, the player respect, which is really why we're here to serve our players and this staff in general, everybody's here to care about. And I know we'll be great teachers and, and support system for our players. Um, but when Sully went to the fall league, not only did he have his own players that spoke highly of him, but there was a lot of really positive feedback from the four other clubs that were part of that. And I think, you know, for me, that said a whole lot about his ability to connect and, and make a difference in players, um, and gain their trust in a short period of time. So, um, you know, that's our hitting department. Nate Landau is part of our sports science group. We'll help round that department out. Um, and he'll be a huge asset as well to work with our research and development department to, to make sure. And then, of course, we don't want to miss out our man, Bert, Morgan Burkhart, who's been a, a stalwart uh, at the big league level in the organization for many years and, and well-respected uh, for a lot of reasons. So it's a, it's a tremendous group that I'm really excited about. Great. Thanks, Mike. Yes, sir. Thank you, Joe. Hey, Mike. How's it going? Good, Kyle. How you doing, man? Good, good. Hey, so so many of your coaches have minor league player development backgrounds. How does that align with some of the organization's goals moving forward, especially with some of the young talent you guys have coming up the system? Yeah, it's a part of it, man. It's part of the goals for the organizational alignment to create that synergy between the big league staff, the player development department, and then making sure we're keeping um, an easy transition into what can be a challenge for players that they come up to to compete for a championship caliber club that we expect to have in San Diego. Um, so that's really important, you know, not only in the hitting department, but you look across the board against our whole staff. One, one of the many things I love about the staff is, is the experiences they have. You know, this is a group that has really fought and earned their way um, as players to get the most out of their careers as coaches. Like I said, they've managed, they've coordinated, they they've gotten dirty in, in the sense of getting in the, you know, on the field and coordinating different programs. And so they know what players and what it takes to, to be able to teach, um, communicate, immerse themselves with the players. And, you know, all these guys have clearly done it because they care about, care about players, which is why we're here. So, um, you know, a little bit more maybe to answer your question, but, you know, it's definitely a factor to make sure that there was an experience level um, from a teaching and a, and a coaching standpoint from a lot of different levels, including the big leagues, to round out our staff for, for not only our big league players, but the players coming up. Yeah, and just to follow up, obviously some players like Jackson Merrill, Ethan Salas, guys who got to double A last year and potentially could help the club within the next two years. How important was it to have coaches who have worked with these guys and know them personally to help make that transition whenever the time comes? Yeah, it's important. You know, it's important that, um, again, guys that have familiarity with them, when they come up, I, I know our big league clubhouse is going to make these players feel comfortable and welcome as well. You know, that's part of the process. You know, the clubhouse, helping the clubhouse and, and our, you know, our players have the heart to help these guys come up, but also having some familiarity with with Mac and Sully and Barbs and, and some of this group um, that when they come up, there's, there's that continuity familiarity and, and, and trust that's already established. Yeah. Obviously uh, Ruben able to no surprise back on the staff. And he's somebody that, that, you know, the last few years is, is drawn rave reviews from people throughout the organization and players. Uh, there will be a lot of new arms to the organization on this team in, in 2024, and obviously potentially some guys that could come up through the minor leagues and contribute. What are you looking forward to uh, as far as Ruben working with some of the new arms to the organization and, and, and what he may be able to accomplish 
uh, with those uh, pitchers. Yeah, I'm glad you brought it up, Sam, because, you know, we do want to recognize and, and celebrate the new staff members, um, <clears throat> but also want to recognize the strength that we have in our staff with Ruben and Ben Fritz, our, our bullpen coach. Uh, Peter Somerville helps that group as well. Um, it's a, it's an exceptionally talented group. Ruben is a <coughs> – pardon me – is an exceptionally gifted pitching coach. He's got a lot of dimensions, a lot of depth to him. He's done a fantastic job his first two years. Uh, it's a it's a it's a group that has a lot of their processes in place that that quite clearly work. He's um, you know Ruben's got a tremendous ability um, to see the game from a lot of different lenses. He's very modern with an old school you know kind of a blend to it. Um, he does a good job communicating and individualizing with our players and and working with our players. He's just a really talented guy, as is Fritzy, and and so it, I'm super excited this group's in place and and you know, has that continuity behind it. You know, also one of the things that the strength of Rubens uh, and Fritzy's, both of them have player development experience. Both of them have a heart for players, have an understanding of where players come from. You know, Fritzy's managed in the minor leagues before, um, has been a coordinator coming up through the system. Rubens spent 21 years primarily in a coordinator's role, um, you know, and over in Cleveland has developed, you know, a lot of quality pitching. And he was a big part of that. So he's got this wonderful ability to be able to to help the guys that are more established big league players. But he's also got a real, real talent in having an understanding how to develop players coming up. And he's done a really good job of already establishing relationships with our player development department and creating that synergy to make sure that, you know, we're working together to, to create a continuity for our players to in the, in the transition when they come up to be seamless. So, it's a strong part of our club. It's a great staff, and Ruben heads it, and I'm excited to work with it. Um, uh, you've been very thorough with uh, your explanation of coaches and stuff. I might wonder if I might ask you about a couple of players uh, that you have that are new and also returning. First, uh, with your pitching staff, uh, with the addition of Matt Suey and, and the return of Suarez, I'm wondering if you've kind of thought about the roles that the two of them will have with each other this season. Uh, thought about it, you know, not gotten to the point where it's granular. Excited to have Matsui aboard, you know, Sanchi back. Um, you know, both of them are, you know, looks like they're having really productive all seasons, as pretty much sounds like all of our club is. Feels like our guys are winning their all season, so that's exciting. Um, you know, as far as the roles go, the good news is, you know, give us as many quality pitchers as possible, and we'll figure out how to use them in the right spots. You know, good, uh, you know, Sanchi's got an experience closing, which is great. Clearly, um, Matsui does as well. You know, I don't, I don't know that we're going to establish this absolute, you know, rubber stamp. This is the closer kind of deal. I think the ability to, based on where we are in lineups and matchups, gives us some flexibility. So I'm appreciative of the quality of guys we're going to have in the back end of the bullpen and the other guys in our bullpen as well. And then as far as the, the pitchers that you uh, got in return uh, from the Yankees, uh, three of them have starting uh have started in the majors and I'm wondering if you're looking at uh, putting all three of them in the starting rotation or giving them the shot or where do you see their roles at, at this point in time uh they'll definitely be in the competition to start for sure you know they've been acquired we're excited about you know King and um, Brito and Vasquez um also gotten to talk to them briefly um met Brito and Vasquez uh, you know as well just the reports prior to meeting were high character, solid, you know, kind of guys you want in your club and, you know, getting to meet them and talk to them. They, they more than exceed that. These are, these are really hungry guys that are excited about the opportunity that will be given the opportunity to start. And uh, I, I can't wait to see what they're going to do for us. They're going to be a big part of what we do. And then uh, finally, last night we saw Toddy uh, hit a home run in the 10th inning in the Dominican Winter League and the playoffs for his team down there. Uh, I'm wondering if you saw him play and then also wondering about uh, what conversation went into having him play in winter ball uh, request and, and how that all went down with that decision to, I don't want to say allow him to play, but allow him to play down there. Yeah, I, I mean, AJ can speak to some of that. I'll, I'll give you my, my um, involvement with it. Um, yeah, I saw his home run last night, big homer in the 10th, put his club ahead by two. Um, I was texting with some of the hitting group, and Alan Craig's like, man, that was a nice seven iron he hit out of there. Um, it's a good-looking swing, and I got to see him um, 
in person for two games, you know, towards the, you know, end of December. He looks great. Um, when I was there, he, I, you know, I don't know why these golf references come up because I don't really play golf, but he like a two iron down the left field line for a three run homer. Um, Again, he looks good, feels good. As far as why he's playing, you know, listen, he missed 17 months. Um, I think he was happy with aspects of his season and talking to him. I also feel like, you know, in talking to him, he felt like he wanted a few things. He wanted to work on a few things, um, and that provided an opportunity for that. And then finally, listen, the guy who loves playing baseball, and he loves playing baseball for his, for basically his hometown and his home country for his dad. So I get all that, and it's just a – Man, what a treat it was to go down and watch him play, and just the joy that, that ex- this guy, you know, has with the game. And um, so that was that was a part of the you know decision making process of, of why he went down to to get his advance in and work in, and play play winter ball. Thanks for your time, Skip. I and I look forward to seeing your golf game out there as well. You did not want to see this. <laughs> you actually de- definitely don't want to be on the side of it. I'll let I'll let Darren uh, hit my driver. <laughs> Espo would be like a two-headed deal. Like Espo will take over a lot of the game decisions, um, and then I would see Ruben being the guy that that you know takes over the pitching side of it. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Back to AJ. Follow-up question. We have a separate question unrelated to the coaching staff. Just I think the first two times we spoke to you at the introductory presser and at the winter meetings, you mentioned how important it was to like kind of get this team back on track to compete in the National League West. Um, the division's gotten tougher this winter with some of the signings elsewhere. I'm just kind of wondering how you view that goal and the challenges that are ahead with, with who these other teams, specifically the Dodgers have added. Yeah. I mean, it's still the goal and, uh, it's then and now it's clearly a challenge. I mean, you know, we're talking about, um, you know, very competitive, well-organized, um, you know, teams that have, you know, two of which were in the playoffs last year. And of course, Arizona going to the, you know, represent the National League in the World Series. So it's a competitive division, um, which we enjoy and I personally embrace. Um, out of all respect to our opponents, it's really more about what we do. You know, we compete against ourselves every day. We play the game the way we expect to play it um, and play the game smart and effectively. Um, usually the game rewards you. So we'll show up every night to – Obviously, respect our opponent, be prepared for our opponent, um, but really more about us executing our plan and how we want to we want to uh, compete and looking to make sure we're ready at every turn to do just that. And we execute on every side of the ball and we do it together. You know, we'll uh, we'll shake a lot of hands. And, you know, if we have the mindset about what we can control, it's uh, it's typically works out a little bit better as opposed to being overly concerned about the other side outside of just game planning for him. All right. I think that does it. Shilty, thanks a lot for the time. Yeah, I do got to give our man Tim Weeper some love. It's one staff member I didn't get a chance to to really share. He's going to coach third for us, work with the infield um, with a little help from Barbs and Scott Stroud, who hits our fungos. Um, but Leap, the guy I've known since 2013 and is a really, really good baseball guy. He's coached third base for Team Canada. Um, and has a lot of baseball experience to bring a lot of energy and expertise and um, like a little human Red Bull, just a, just a positive, good guy that, you know, brings a lot of good energy that I'm looking forward to, to being on our staff as well. So I didn't want to not mention somebody that uh, is an important addition to us. And, and also uh, excited to have David Macias back coaching first base. Looking forward to those two guys partnering together on our base running. And David will be back to, to help shepherd our outfield as well. And, you know, did a nice job with, uh, you know, Toddy helping him with his uh, platinum gold glove. So, anyway, just want to make sure those guys got their rightful due. Awesome. Glad you did. Definitely.